the Scottish Highlands. They once echoed with battle cries and the clang of clashing swords. Today, it's a much more peaceful place. But if you listen closely, the sounds of centuries past can still be heard. Rob Miller is one of a dying breed, a swordsmith, still crafting blades using an ancient technique. What initially really pulled me into this was this idea about fire and hammer, forge work, all this kind of very primal energy that, that goes into making a sword. At his workshop on the Isle of Skye, Rob turns raw steel into polished pieces of art. For 21 years, it's been his trade, but there was never an apprenticeship. This idea had always stayed with me, you know, I'd like to make a sword, so I, I did some research. I started writing around the old bookshops and pre-internet days, you know, getting as much information as I possibly could. And I ended up just teaching myself in my spare time, just bashing away. No matter the blade, it all starts as a billet, a thin slab of raw steel that Rob cuts into shape. Next, it's time to forge. On a molecular level, when you introduce the steel into the fire, it, it'll start to open up the lattice within it, and it, it starts to, to move around toward a molten state. Here, fire and hammer mix to form a super dense blade edge and tip. What the hammer blows do is they compact that steel down into very dense crystalline structures along the edges particularly. So you're looking at a, a, a way of refining that steel and hardening it and breaking it down and re-breaking it and repacking it again and again and again until this, you've got this very fine crystalline edge. Once compacted, the blade's ready to be ground. Grinding's just refining the shape removing as much stock as you can afford to without compromising the integrity of the blade at all. So you want this to be as light as possible because the guy that lasts longest in battle without getting tired wins, basically. You know, it kind of breaks down for that. The simpler concept as that is, not everyone gets it. I've been asked to do a couple of ridiculous things in my time, but uh, this, is, uh, this is about 20 pounds of steel based on on one from the first Conan movie, and uh, there's no way you're gonna be able to fight with this. You've just gotta wait and hope that somebody's gonna fall underneath you and it'll drop on them maybe, you know? These days, Rob makes swords for collectors, not warriors, but most are exact replicas of those used in battle. Historically, each culture had its own unique style, each sword designed for a particular way of fighting. What we're looking at here is a very typical Scottish weapon called the Claymore, a um, large two-handed sword used predominantly for really devastating blows, for being able to get into the armour and the joints in between, crack stuff open. So if you take this as an example of the larger, more bludgeoning instrument, and then something like this, which is your typical medieval single-handed sword, much faster, much lighter, uh, more flexibility, and along with that, strength and the integrity that you really need when you're going into battle. Back at the forge, the two most important steps, hardening and tempering, now begin. You reintroduce the, the steel into the fire, bring it up to a bright cherry red, generally, and there's a particular peak when the, the steel will be ready, the, the lattice within that steel will be open to being shocked. Plunging a red-hot bar of steel into oil, you'll get a flare-up of, of flames and smoke and it'll shock the steel into hardening very, very quickly. You'll end up with, in effect, something more like glass. So if you took a hammer to that steel afterwards, you could tap it and it would shatter. With the shock therapy over, the blade goes into the forge one last time for tempering. Tempering is about creating a compromise between that hardness and the flexibility that you're looking for without losing too much of a cutting edge. So it's always about this compromise. Finally, strength and flexibility are in balance. The blade gets ground down once more to remove the surface scale, and then it's polished to a shine. All that's left now are the finishing touches. With many months going into some blades, this is always an anxious moment. I'm one of these people that I'm never 100% pleased with anything, and I probably never ever will be, but that's part of the driving force to go on doing this, you know, to, to be creative. But there are times, there are moments when I can look upon a piece and say, that's a job well done, you know, I like that. Beautiful and powerful. Though Rob's swords will never see a battlefield, 
they're keeping a long legacy in Scotland alive. It's interesting to think that at some point in the history of our people and our families individually and collectively, somebody would have stood up with a sword to defend the rights of that family to continue. And that as a direct or indirect result of the sword, we are alive today.